Good evening, good morning, good night. Wherever you may be watching this transmission, it is I, Mike Martins, with another very special edition of Trends in the Housing Market. I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight. We got a lot going on tonight on the show. Uh, we might get Steve the Plumber in. Hopefully, he's not tied up later. Literally tied up. Uh, the date today is the 10th of January, 2019. And share this and get this out there. My channels are all getting... Um... Oh, I got an Opal Tower update in the comment section. So hopefully somebody could tell me something. And an Opal Tower updates. Any or an Opal Tower updates. Let's see what, what I got here for Opal Towers. If there are any updates... Let's see what's going on there. No, the oldest one from January the 8th. Residents to face six-week wait to go home. I'll get to that later. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me. There's lots of stuff happening all over the English-speaking world. And this channel works hard to unify the English-speaking world. And don't, guys, don't forget, uh, walking journey in the comments... Uh, where's his channel? I just had it here. Walking Journey. Don't forget to check him out. Two-time world champion living in uh, Conroe, Texas. Check him out. See what he's got going on. Uh, he left the housing crisis in California and moved to good old Texas and uh, living in good old Texas and uh, probably have him on the show if he can. Hey, Mike. On the West Coast, working on Vancouver Island, looking forward to tonight's show. Dude, why don't you take a ride up here, dude? Come on, man. Come on. Get on a bus and say, I need to go to Merritt. They'll be like, why? I, I got to see somebody. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So, if you guys want to Skype me, uh, we got some open lines tonight. Um, Mawabi, if you want to be on, on video tonight, go ahead and Skype me. If you don't mind showing your uh, beautiful face to us. Because I got the Skype thing working really well right now. And I can show people live, live coverage. There's a lot going on, guys, in this housing market. So many people being duped. So many people got into these deals. So I want to kick off tonight by saying something uh, from somebody that, was, that told me something. And it's kind of important, guys. There was a gentleman who lost his house. The locks were changed. The locksmith was there. Everything was there. He lost his house. He was outside on the street. And he was talking to another person I know personally. And said that the banks, and it's a well-known one of the big four banks in Canada. And it's not no Mickey Mouse shadow lending. You know, it was the bank. One of the banks falsified his pay stub, falsified his T4, and falsified his earnings, and made a fake pay stub saying he was working for this big company making X amount of money when he wasn't, and he never worked there. They actually falsified documents, and he didn't even know it. So he, they told him, yeah, you could afford this. This is good for you and your family, and this, this, and that. Five months down the road, boom, it hits. And I'm going to tell you guys from my experience in finance, Okay, And I was a regional manager for a big financial institution for Western Canada. And let me tell you something. We can look at a deal, credit score, deal, uh, cr um, la um, debt load, loan to value, debt ceilings. We can look at everything and we can tell if a deal is going to fall apart in six months, three months, five months. I'm going to give them six months. I give them four months. It's not because we want someone to default. It's just we can't do the deal, so we decline them. And they go somewhere else and pay a higher interest rate and get the deal approved. So you see how things are not really kosher right now? I mean, but this was back in the day, okay? This is when I was working in finance. And that's when I saw, you know, okay, I'm, well, we're going to have to decline this deal. I'm not, we're not going We're not going to approve this deal. Yes, yes, yes. We won't applaud. We won't approve this deal. Okay, let's let's decline him. You know, even though we can't get the numbers to fit, he's in a gray area. Let him go somewhere else. 
He goes somewhere else, pays a little bit of a higher rate, gets the deal he wanted, and then after six months, he defaults. So that's becoming a big problem where uh, one of the major banks have been falsifying documents. And Buddy's out in the street, him, his wife, and his kids. Uh, I think they were in a minivan, and they drove off. And the guy was uh, in tears after the locksmith changed the locks. And the guy didn't have a home to go to. So, you see, guys, also on another note, on another note, how important it is to stay on good terms with family members and never burn bridges with anybody, ever. Always stay on good terms with family no matter what because then something like this happens to you and you have nowhere to turn. What are you going to do, right? So banks falsifying documents and creating documents that don't even exist and pay stubs and payroll that doesn't exist just to put in the file to approve the deal. Kevin Thompson saying, Mike, would pe people with jobs are homeless. Yeah, I have an article. I've been talking about this. We've been talking about these 10 cities and how 50% of the people in these 10 cities work full time. And they're homeless. Let me drink a swift water here. <sighs> Trends in the housing market, guys. You're at the right place in the right time. Welcome to my backup channel. This video will be uploaded to my main channel. Tomorrow midday, once uh, YouTube finalizes it and goes up to this channel, and I'll uh, remove it and bring it up to the other channel. Oh, Kevin Thompson said he had to evict some squatters today. Yep, it's happening. It is happening. Ani64 in the house. Sly, Ro Sly Rylan. Sly Raylan. Rylan? Rylan in the house. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a big show tonight. I got. I'm gonna wait till I get one more viewer, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drop a bombshell. Like, let's go backwards in the articles, and I'll get to the bombshell. I got a bombshell for you guys. I'm gonna need to retard my anger a bit because I'm, I'm not anger and excitement. I need to bring it back a bit before I read this article. Because right now you guys are seeing me at a two. This is a two right now. Out of ten, so you're seeing me out of a, you're seeing me out of two. You don't want to see me out of five or six. Single mom looking for men over thirty. Wow, that's your merit. That's so nice. I hate these 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 pop ups, garbage. All right, guys, let's start from the back end here. Lack of affordable affordable housing destroying communities in Dublin. I've been saying this. A Dublin city councillor has slammed the government over lack of affordable housing in Dublin, saying it's destroying communities across the city. And again, um, Dublin house price uh, is over 430,000 euros and was out of reach for most families. It's actually out of reach for 94% of the families living in Ireland. So 94% of the families living in Ireland cannot live in their own capital city. Same thing with people living in Vancouver. Melbourne, Sydney, Auckland, London, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland. Oh, yeah. So, lack of affordability, destroying communities in Dublin, Ireland. This was sent to me by uh, um, uh, Anthony Fitzpatrick, who lives in Dublin, and he owns a company there. And he says that he's having a really hard time finding good uh, talent out of college because they can't afford to pay the rent. Some people are paying $400 a week for rent. $600 a week for rent. Euros. This is not pesos. Or bolivarize or bolivarize or, or escudos. This is, well, this is a lot of money. So Dublin's out of reach for majority of people. Good old Ireland. I just hope the protesters, the protests continue there against what has been happening there. Dublin housing crisis will take years to fix, says council's boss. Look at the people sleeping on the street. Dublin's housing crisis will not be solved for at least three years. Well, well, why? 
Is it, okay, guys, we got three years to fix this. Take your time. Let me know in a year if we got anything, any ideas. You don't let me know in two, then we can figure something out. And then when the third year comes, we'll just tell people it'll take another three more years. Like, uh, why exactly? Okay, Dublin's housing crisis will not be solved for another three years, despite a recent increase in supply in new homes, a senior official has warned. Brendan Kennedy, the deputy chief executive of Dublin City Council, said that some progress had been made in tackling the city's supply problem. You know how many people are homeless right now in Ireland? Uh, sorry, in Dublin? It's like 10,500 and 2,500 are children. So disappointed with the Irish right now. How they could let this happen to their country when it has happened to every other English-speaking country. You notice how it's spreading north into those other countries, eh? So Kevin Thompson says, sales are always slow this time of year. Okay, guys, before you say, if you're living in the Northern Hemisphere, how sales are low now this, this time of year, it's winter, blah, 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 sales drop off. It's summer in Australia. No one's buying anything. It's summer in New Zealand. No one's buying anything. So before you tell me, oh, you know, it's this slow time of year, things will pick up in the spring, they're not. Woo! Okay. UK councils ripped off by private landlords. New new figures reveal that English councils spend more than one billion a year on temporary housing. Poor guy. Look at this guy. He's got his socks. Brand new socks. Your Puma socks. Oh, that's gotta hurt, man. This guy's what twenty? Doesn't even have full facial hair. Breaks my heart, man. A homeless man in London. The 32 London boroughs are among the highest spenders on temporary accommodation. Desperate councils are being ripped off as private housing providers take advantage of growing homeless population. Experts have warned. After new figures revealed, the local authority's spending on temporary accommodation has soared almost $1 billion. Wow. Some councils are spending as much as £200 per head of their population on sheltering homeless households. Housing policy experts said that the sharp rise in homelessness coupled with increasing charges from priv uh, private providers were behind, were, were behind the increase. Wow. Private providers is like, yeah, yeah, I got a place for somebody for temporary. Yeah, it's, give me 300 pounds a night. Wow. About 55,000 London households are living in temporary accommodation. 55,000 in London. That's not in England. Okay, London is in England. That's not all of England is what I mean. That's just London. 55,000 London households are living in temporary accommodation. Almost 70% of England's homeless families are based in the capital. 70%? It's just concentrated. Remember the bright lights of the big city? Go down to the city, you end up homeless. I know I know someone that recently went to um, San Francisco from Colorado and ended up becoming homeless there. Only about 6% of London's private rental market is available for families relying on housing benefit. Wow. Every year it's going up. Seven year, 17 to 18... 2012, 2013 wasn't too much, but like the price of accommodations skyrocketing. Holy mokes. Let's move on. So this goes to Kevin Thompson's article, Working But Homeless, A Tale from England's Housing Crisis. Ryan Russell pokes his head into a small warm room with clean white walls and a single bed next to a window. Is this mine, he asks, outside the rooftops of the affluent English town? 45 miles south of London. The lanky 22-year-old sits on the bed, which suddenly looks too small for him. A big grin spreading across his face. Will his feet poke out the end? I'll be fine. I'm only six foot five. So there it is. People are being housed in temporary shelters and accommodation. England is, is so far out of control. Uh, right now, with the amount of people sleeping rough, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, 
a lot of people working full time, working two jobs, and are homeless. This is a long story, guys. So I'm gonna let, leave. I'm gonna leave you guys with this to read it on your own. You could donate to this guy's um, Habitat for Humanity. So there it is. There, Financial Times. If you guys want to read it yourselves, let's move on. Let's move on to New Zealand real quick here. Economists forecast soft data in Auckland housing market post uh, barfoot figures. Auckland's housing market could produce more of a soft data after the, the city's largest agency revealed annual price decline for the first time in a decade. An economist says, yeah, so prices in, 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 in New Zealand are going to be heading down. She was commenting in the median Auckland house price last year fell 0.8% from 836,000 to 840 uh, from 843 earlier this year. So you're starting to see declines, especially if people took interest only mortgages or their 100% loan to value. So for the first time in a decade, the Auckland residential property market is, is edging towards a price decline, the agency said. So there you go. Good news for people living in New Zealand. Auckland housing market is ending towards a price decline for the first time in a decade. Again, more news coming on that headline. Canberra overtakes Sydney as most expensive rental city. So right now, Canberra is going up. So if you're living in Australia, so people in Sydney could relax and cool their heels because the price of rent isn't as expensive as they thought or the most expensive in the country because Canberra, hello, you have topped the Australian rental market and medium weekly asking rents for housing in Sydney fell 1.8% to 540 over, that's 540 a week by the way, the December quarter landlords in West and South West suffering biggest blow according to Dom Domain's latest rental report. Can Canberra prices have risen 3.7% over the year with asking rents in a house now 560 per week, the most expensive in the country, an 8.1% increase to unit rents now starting at 465 oh, a week. $465 a week. No wonder all these people fall behind on their land, like rents and mortgages and rents, I'm saying. Well, this is so expensive. All right, Sydney is no longer the most expensive, and it's we 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 got, we covered that. Sydney housing slump to deepen as prices drop the most since 1980. This was posted today. The downturn in Sydney's property market is set to deepen this year with tighter lending standards and the worst slump in value since the late 1980s cause nervous buyers to sit on the sidelines. Average studies of home values have fallen 11.1% since their 2017 peak. According to CoreLogic Inc., data released Wednesday surpassing the 9.6% top-to-bottom decline when Australia was at the cusp of entering its last recession. Nationwide dwelling values declined 4.8% in 2018, making the weakest housing market condition since 2008, CoreLogic said. Access to finance is likely to remain most significant barrier Ding, ding, ding. You got it. When people can't afford to buy it or they can't uh, access um, the funds, guess what happens? People can't afford to buy. So, guys, don't forget to add me to Skype. Mike Martins 1980. That is Mike Martins. M-I-K-E-M-A-R-T-I-N-S. Like it's spelled on the screen. 1980. Add me on Skype. Please add me on Skype. And if you want to be on the show, on trends in the housing market and Saturday nights if you want to be on Mike of the Night. The 10th of January, 2019. I hope everyone's having a good one. We're already 10 days into the year. And man, does it feel good. Feeling good. I'm back on my ketosis diet. High fat, no carb, no sugar diet. And it's becoming a it's becoming a bit of a challenge, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'm going to get there. And I'm on the Evan, the Evan coffee right now. So I'm taking the Evan invented by Evan himself uh in hong kong i've been drinking the coffee now and uh back on uh back on um back on track here hopefully i can lose 20 pounds by uh by summer okay who we got here 
Sly Ryan, RBA interest rates uh, is 1.5%, nothing rising. That doesn't seem to be saving the housing crash. Crazy. Uh, Sly, what is the bank's prime rate? Uh, here in Canada, it's 3.95. So, real Kevin Thompson, guys, if you're interested, has a condo for sale in Oakville, Ontario. He's been advertising here in the comment section for the last 100 years. And going, who else is in the comments? Somebody say something. There's 20 people watching. This is my backup channel. I'm so excited that I'm getting my viewers back. I'm not, I won't be able to, um, um, live stream on my main channel for another three months. MG saying, buy high, sell low. Yep. Yep. Uh, it looks like that uh, Kevin Thompson's coming on the market this spring. When the spring sales kick off, we got to get him on the show. I'll even pay him to be on the show. I had people that were planning on donating $1,000 to have you on the show. Steve the Plumber and Peter out in um, Sydney have pledged $1,000 each if Kevin Thompson could come on the show then that could buy me my new computer. Kevin Thompson wants $175 an hour. So if we have you on for three minutes, what does that work out to? If it's $175 an hour, 60 minutes in an hour, divide it into that, and they'll give you... Anyways... Anyways, okay, so before we kick off the United States, I want to see how everybody's doing. Um, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty right now in every market, and not just the housing market. We're talking like, we're, we're, we're talking like big time, lots of problems. Guys, don't forget to um, subscribe to the Justin Cringe channel, please. Justin Cringe is trying to get... Um, which you might call it Skype, and I don't know why his Skype isn't working. I don't know why he's having Skype problems, but no one has Skype problems on this show. Everybody calls in, no problem. It's free. You don't have to pay. He said they're asking for his credit card, and there is no credit card. Ah, oh, Stephen Williams is here. I wonder if he's sleeping. I see Stephen Williams on Skype here. Wonder if I could call him and see what he's up to. Who else is on Skype tonight? Mm-hmm. I like to sort it by uh like live. Well, how do you do that? It doesn't let you. It doesn't let you um do it live. I hate Skype for like it doesn't let you organize it by live. Like who's online right now? But if Stephen Williams is in the house and he wants to be on the show, let me know. Because he is live on, he is he is on Skype right now. Let's try to see who else is here. Belinda's there, but she's not live. Man, nobody's nobody's on right now. Come on, guys, get on your Skype. Add me, Mike Martin's nineteen eighty trends in the housing market. Tell us what's going on in your area. Tell us. Uh, if there's any evictions, it, uh, are you going through a tough time? I'm going to message... Um, let's see if he's awake. I want to hear from Stephen Williams. I hope he's, uh, uh, I hope he's doing okay. Because I'd like to hear from him. I'm going to tell him to get dressed. He's got a really good, he's got a really, housing dude, housing, housing, Wednesday nights, I'm messaging him right now, yeah, yeah, find out what's going on, and uh, so the feds put a, a, a pause on the rate hike. They're not raising rates. You saw a slight uh, increase in the markets today. 
I don't know how short-lived it would be because they're just prolonging this uh, um, they're prolonging this so Steven is ready to go so he says he's he's ready to go I'm gonna open up his channel here this is my backup channel so I don't have him open here I'm gonna throw him up here he's gonna discuss the uh, housing crisis in his, in his area get his channel here where's his channel you, you gotta be kidding me anyone that because steven steven williams um um leans to the right he's a right-leaning uh conservative and maybe i spelled his name wrong there he is that's him right there my Jamaican counterpart here living in Niagara Falls, Canada, who has his own channel. He's almost at 8,000 subs, guys. So if you guys can, uh, please subscribe to Stephen Williams' channel. Let's give him a call right now. Let's see what he could tell us on what's going on. Bumber us. All right, I got my man here. He's gonna lower his television set. He's setting up. I'm gonna have him live here in a few seconds. He's putting on his microphone. He's looking good. It's okay. We'll give you a few seconds to set up here. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll give you a few seconds to set up. Are you watching CNN, dude? No one watches CNN. Yes, and like I said, he's a former CIA case officer as well. Um, but what's important to note is that this is not the first time Israel has used civilian or non-military aircraft as cover. Can you hear me, man? Can you hear me? I think he was sleeping. Oh, he's setting up still. All right. We'll give him a few seconds now to set up. I'll get him I will get him back on the line right now. He's still setting up his office. But I'd like to know what's going on on his end. He's he's got so much how to invest in the stock market. Um uh, social media collapse selling to make money stock market crash canada's debt risk bitcoin price predictions uh he's got like it's almost like his videos are not even here it's like i see his videos and it's like like it's almost like you can't find them all right he wasn't hearing me all right let's see if he could get me now all right Let's see if we get a connection here. Steven, are you there, buddy? Can you hear me? Steven, can you hear me, buddy? No? Can't hear me? Hello? Yeah, I think he can't hear me. Hey, we have we have this problem with Peter out in Sydney. Same problem. People can't hear nobody. Uh, I don't know if it's something with Skype or their audio or something. But it is, yeah, we got no audio here. Yeah, he can't hear me. I don't know why. My audio is plugged in. My audio is plugged in. Everything's working. You guys wouldn't be hearing me right now. But uh, hopefully he could fix that. Stress test him, Mike. Yeah, I'm going to stress test him. Our rate offered by your lender is 2%, whichever is higher. 
For uninsured home buyers, anyone who qualifies with a down payment of 20% or more, the minimum qualifying rate based on either Bank of Canada five-year benchmark at 5.41%. Um, so people are going, um, yeah, no, my audio is working. Hmm. Maybe if I go into my settings. Anyways. Micro yeah, yeah, audio's working. Microphone settings on. Yep. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. That is weird. So what is happening with the people YouTube world out there, guys? Don't forget to share with this new channel. I, I really I'm really, really, really upset with what's happening with um with being blocked out of um, channel getting restricted and shut down because I was talking about the Australian housing market. I mean, you got to give me a break, man, from three years ago. So Steve the Plumber is going to be on the show later. I hope he's okay. Um, he's attending another foreclosure property. So there's a lot of foreclosures going on, guys, uh, a lot of foreclosures. And he's dealing with a lot of them firsthand. And he's really heartbroken with some of these families on what is happening uh, on his end. He's really, really saddened on what's happening. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I feel bad for the guy uh, having to see that. It's like being a doctor or something, right? But you want to be a doctor to help people. But you don't want to be a doctor to watch people, you know, when things don't go right, right? So I kind of feel for the guy. The amount of for he's never done this many foreclosures ever in in a week. You know what I'm saying? So let's see if we get some uh, audio, audio here from uh, Mr. Williams. So can, hey, I could hear you. Can you hear me? No, no, it's just turn it on. I just hear a bit of rumbling here. Okay, the speak or the video call. Hey, no, we'll do that. Because it was great. It was great, no? Hello? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna unmute and mute him. I might give him something off fight. Yeah, hear me? Oh, I could hear you perfect. I could barely hear you perfectly. How you doing? I can't see you. Are you? Are you okay? I can deny it. <laughs> it looks really dark where you are. It's all black. Yeah, but no, I don't know. What, no. The water, but I didn't channel current. Them saying can't live stream until April, but you see my live stream on a different channel. Oh no, I'm on my backup channel, dude. Oh, um, what happened? You had mute me? No, you're not muted. I don't know what the heck is going on. I can't see you. Your camera's off or something. Hello? He just hung up. Something's wrong. So we're having problems with Skype tonight. I'm not sure what the heck is going on. But, um, uh, yeah, let's see if he calls me what happens. Hello? 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 Oh, I, can, yeah, I can't see you. Now. Let me... No, don't worry. I'm going to move. Uh, now I'm going to tape up my, my um, laptop with a piece of tape. And I don't want you spying on me. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm always spying on you. You know that. <laughs> I'm always want... spying on you. I, I, I don't want you and the CIA friend them spy on me. Oh, I have no, I have no ties to the Central Intelligence Agency, buddy. Don't worry. You know that this is the new world order. They just want to see and hear everything going on everywhere in your life. No, they can't satisfy with just oh. knowing that they have you as a number. They want to have you every every move you make. They want to know how much time of the day you go to the bathroom, etc. Yeah, well, here's the deal with that. They've been doing that with your microwave since 1984. So it's nothing new. They know when you're eating, what you're eating. They know what you're putting in your microwave. They know when you're taking it out of your microwave. They know everything. All right. I think I am. All right, buddy. Hey, one more. All right, bring your bring your cam tilt your camera down just a little bit. 
There you perfect. Perf don't don't yeah, perfect. Don't don't move it. All, All right, right, guys, here he is, Stephen Williams, two time world champ in, <laughs> in that, the house <laughs> on trends in the housing market. <laughs> okay, buddy, you're gonna have to tell us what is going on in Ontario. I know there's a lot of foreclosures in the GTA. I know there's a lot of foreclosures in the smaller towns. I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of problems in the housing market right now in Ontario with this B12 and all the stress testing and all this crap. What have you been mm -hmm. hearing around? Um, well, when I speak to, when I look around, as I said um, the other day, there are, I have my, my house listing. There's nobody contacting me. There's about three houses, one next door to me. And two on that road, uh, and next, um, the other side beside me. I would mind if I had the money to just buy them up because um, nobody's looking, nothing, nothing. Everything is just dead. When I call the real estate agent, talk to them what's happening, everything is just dead. So I don't know if it's because of the winter time. Nobody that, but this is January. People, there are usually a little activity um, around this time, right? Even though mm. it's cold. Huh? Yeah, it's it, it's kind of a slow season right now. It starts picking up around March, second week of March. Yeah. So uh, you said you listed your house? My house was listed. Um, I was feeling out the market because I wanted to see how much I could get for it. And if I get a good offer, I had something else that I wanted to buy. I got this guy is retiring, so he's selling a nice, um, nice thirteen doors, so multi thing. Um, so I wanted to to get into that, but it's a lot of money, a lot of debt, and I am debt free like you, so I'm scared to get back into debt. Eh? <laughs> well, this is the wrong time to get into debt right now. Right I now know. is the time you don't want to be owing anything. I know, and I'm trying. My best to clear up everything that I have right now. You know, my biggest debt in Canada is how much, guy? Guess. What? What your what? Your debt is? Yeah. What your debt is right now? Uh, Zero. I wish. No, three thousand six hundred dollar guy. That's yeah, not okay. bad. That's no money, right? No, you three thousand. No, a, year, a lot of people would switch with you in a heartbeat that have a mortgage that's uh, paying a mortgage of a house that's worth less than what they bought it for. Oh, that's yeah. You see, what's happening now? A lot of people don't realize it, but you see, um, in two thousand seventeen, when the houses were selling high, a lot of people went and buy and was hoping that it would just continue up, 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 just like the marijuana stocks. I have a friend. Who bought a stock for sixty-eight dollar? That stock is now selling in the thirties and forties. So mm -hmm. a lot of people jump in the wrong time, and the illusion is, Mike, is that they think that um, the, the same market exists, but they don't seem to understand that if you have never sold at that time, you have missed. The opportunity and it's gone, but some people are still trying to hold out. Well, I bought my marijuana stock at like three bucks a share. Which which company? Uh, Weed.to, Canopy Growth. Wow. Yeah, wow. I bought I bought it like I, I don't when, when once it was listed on the uh, the the TSX. Are you serious? Yeah. You haven't sold. You haven't sold it. No, I I I. Uh, I did okay with it. I mean, I did, I did, I did okay with it, and I'm kind of happy. And then, and, and uh, I'm reinvesting it in oil and buying and selling oil back and forth. Oh, so you're out of the marijuana thing now? Oh, I'm totally out of the marijuana market right now. But Why? what do you think of them passing that bill? La uh, oh, by the way, if you bought marijuana stock, you can't come to America anymore. It's like they're penalizing you for a crime you committed, like or. They they put a law on the after the crime has been committed and they penalize you. That's um they're jealous of Canada man they're jealous because don't you see just the other day um the hemp bill was signed by the president so little by little they are rolling out and and other companies are listed on the New York Stock Exchange that sell cannabis so I don't know what 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 is this all about because they are. There are quite a few, um, a, a few um, states 
that have legalized the mar that have um, legalized the marijuana. So maybe it's not every state, but come on, uh, I think they're just jealous of Canadians. That's it. Yeah, uh, that's someone else said that too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, someone else said that they're probably jealous of Canada and it's and it's uh, marijuana and stuff like that. Uh, it's just jealousy because they know we're going to make a lot of money from it. So I don't know. Since the Trump administration take over, the relationship with us and them is not the same. Because even when I go to the border, um, sometimes just their attitude towards people nowadays is just not very nice at the border again. You know, since Trump take over. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what do you? What do you? So you got your place on the market. What do you? Are are you? I mean, so you you've got no activity. No activity, zero. And what would have happened if this was two years ago? You would sell it in the same week. Ah, 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 ah. I would be bathing in money now. <laughs> I'd be making mattress out of money, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, you, you, you so many people come bidding on the price, and, and that's what happened to me in Brampton, you know, and, I'm, and uh, I know it sounds selfish, but that's what happened to me in Brampton, man. I had just got my mortgage four years, and all of a sudden, my property almost doubled in value, and I so said, like, what? So I just sold it. The very first offer they, they gave me, I took it, I, and they were shocked. The first half when they put it on the table, I said, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you made it the was right, so good. Well, you made the right choice. That's that's 100%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every day I rejoice and thank God that I made that choice because, um, you know, I, am, I, I don't have to worry about that aspect of my life right now. All I needed now is cash flow, something to give me cash flow, which I don't have. But to, as long as the debt is settled, the major, I have no major debt. I don't buy first hand, I mean, brand new cars. I always buy second hand cars. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't, I think I heard you talking about it too. Yeah. That if and you I, buy a house, if you buy a house, if you buy a car, a good used car for about $3,000, you could sell it back in two years for $3,000. Look, I, you look you're talking about selling back. I, I just, I, I treat cars like how they used to treat disposable cameras. You buy it and you use it and then you throw it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if I'm the last owner, I don't care. And, and you know something? From ever since I've been here, 2009, I've owned so many second-hand cars and they have all been faithful to me. I don't know none that I, I mean, I'm going as far as Times Square driving an old 97 Nissan Quest. And I'm saying, like, why people kill themselves to buy this, uh, put themselves in eight years of pain for one freaking car, eh? I know some people, I know some people that are paying four, five, six hundred a month for a car. That's crazy, eh? Yeah. That's, that that's, is that... why we're so, that's why we're people are so broke. If you've been following the news, it tells you how Canadians are broke now, eh? Oh yeah, we were looking at uh, especially this. Uh, this how what's what's happened, um, uh, uh, Stephen? And, and, I been, and I mentioned this before. The people were using the equity in their homes to buy these new cars. So oh yeah, yeah, they've been banking on their equity and hoping that uh, everything just keeps going up, and they could yeah. use their house to make payments on everything. And then now it's backfiring on them. Oh yeah, it's. A, I can't imagine if I had something like that, man. Because um. Just to get by from day to day, if you don't have that cash flow, so if I and I'm saying if I don't have those debt, those student loan, no car loan, no no no. Uh, well, I have a credit card, but just like two thousand five hundred um, in limit. Uh, but I don't have none of those things, and it's still a struggle sometimes to get through on your paycheck, you know. Mm -hmm. Much more people who have all of those stuff. I, I'm sure a lot of bankruptcy. And they've been saying that on Bloomberg TV that there will be a lot of. They, 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 oh, I, I saw an article. I don't know if you, you probably have come across it. That um, the, 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 these, the best business to get into right now 
is um the debt consolidation business. They are like overwhelmed, guy. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, can I tell you what the problem is with getting into that kind of business is that you're taking it's high risk. If you're working in the debt debt consolidation business and you own your own debt consolidation business and you're lending out your, your money, it's it's high risk. No, 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 no. I'm talking about people who do the bankruptcies. Ah, you're talking yeah. about people that go into into liquidation. You well, liquidation is one, but um, uh, what do you call it? Um, debt For counselors. Um, you know what, like. It's, it, it's like bankruptcy, but it's not consumer proposal. It's what consumer proposal, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those yeah. are booming now because a lot of people, um, I, I, I heard it on Bloomberg TV the other day, they were talking about how those people are busy now because a lot of people have taken on these mortgages and these loans and stuff like that, and they're, 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 they're feeling the crunch now. And see what happened today? Um, they couldn't even raise the interest. Um, raise the interest rate. They had to leave it where it is because they know they want to raise it to cool down the market. But at the same time, they can't because they're going to bankrupt more people, mm -hmm. and and then in turn bankrupt the banks. Okay, I see where you're going, and yeah. but it becomes uh. A vicious circle that people get in themselves into. Did you ever have a friend at work? Like, tell me a story, because I've I've always heard this when I was in the workplace. Like, oh, I got a credit card and I'm paying off another credit card with it, and then I got another credit card to pay off that credit card. Have you ever had this? Anyone ever told you that before? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, 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 nobody has to tell me that. I used to practice that. <laughs> well, nothing so, not so. And my one was never so bad, but it's like. If I have a 20%, 19% interest card and somebody offer me like a 10%, then naturally I'm going to oh, take it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like the yeah, guy's been... Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're juggling. You're juggling the cards. <laughs> yeah, no, I know I what you're talking about. You're juggling the cards. You're using one to pay the other. So you, you, you see, a lot of us, we haven't realized it. But... People don't realize that you don't use debt. People borrow money mm -hmm. to pay off loan. So what is that saying? You're transfer. You're just transferring the the loan to another institution when you borrow to pay a lender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Because because what what you need is income yes. to pay off. Debt, not a loan to pay off another loan, because all you're doing is transferring the loan. Well, yeah, but the thing is, there's hidden fees sometimes when you transfer loans. Yeah. Sometimes there's a lot going on in the back end when you're moving money around, and that you don't, you know, it's like, what do you call those stupid funds? The bank mutual funds. Mm. Try selling a mutual fund and see what happens. They end up taking half the mutual fund in fees. You know, I, I've seen all kinds of stuff like that happening. Sorry, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. Uh, there's somebody in the comments here telling me that he's going to kill me and my family here. What? Uh, uh, yeah, you've been having uh, here. You've been having some. Uh, so, what is their what is their source of this content with you? I have no. No, pe these people are not even. These these people are lost causes. They just. They just do this to get a kick out of people or to, you know, scare people and threaten people. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that sometimes where people uh, come on and start uh, trashing other people in the comment section. So this guy mm. named Carl Johnson came on, started threatening the, uh, the walking journey. Then he started mm. threatening me and they started threatening my kids and my wife. And then it's like, really, dude, you I mean, you are on a Wednesday night. You could be out doing something real nice enjoying life but you're on my show and you're threatening me i wonder what it is that you're doing that he hates i don't even know this guy so it's not even there's no uh, just he probably, like he probably bought at the top of the market yeah just like how youtube um doesn't seem to like 
my channel because it's I don't know. I think YouTube is sabotaging my channel big time because I noticed that when I put out video, I've gotten so discouraged that I'm not even putting out anything these days. I'm going to even turn my channel into a little teach people how to read English or learn English or kids or whatever because mm -hmm. obviously focusing on finance, they don't want the corporation. It's affecting their bottom line, it seems. So they don't want you to expose people and get them intelligent about debt and all those things. You know, um, I remember, okay, there's this guy, Dave Ramsey. I don't know if you know him. You know him? Who? Dave Ramsey. Yeah, of course I know that guy. Right. Okay. Well, Dave, did you know that Dave Ramsey used to uh, be on the radio in Canada? When? Um, it's about, it could have been about two or three years ago. Okay. But we used to pick him up about one o'clock um, or two o'clock every, uh, one o'clock, um, every day on um, 99.5. It's a Christian station um, and we used to get him. He used to stream from the States and uh, Buffalo. Okay. And all of, and all of a sudden... Cause you know this guy educate people about money and and don't take don't buy cars brand new and um, don't take on debt and don't um, buy your house um, for 20, 25, 30 years, buy it for fifteen years. So it discourages you from building wealth. Cause what his philosophy is that if you are in debt, you can't build wealth. Is that simple? Oh no, no, because you got no disposable income. Exactly, because all your payment is going every month to somebody else so that they can be on their jet plane and their yacht and sipping champagne, right? So so he was there telling people not to buy cars, um, brand new and whatnot, whatnot. And apparently they didn't like the message. Um, so before you know it, I'm not like trying to tune into this guy, he's disappeared off the air. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm wondering what the hell happened. And I well, found him on YouTube. They don't want the truth to get out, right? So they people don't, don't want the truth want, to get... But, 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 but they're stupid because, Mike, with YouTube and with um, um, alternative medias, people like yourself and others who are educating people and keeping people abreast of what is happening in the world, they don't like that. They want mm. people to be kept in the dark so that they can make wise decisions. Because maybe if you are influencing people, I'm influencing people, other guys are influencing people, tell them like right now is not the right time to buy real estate. Because if you buy now, you're buying it too high. And if you wait some more, the price is going to come crashing down, which is happening already. Because if it's not selling, what is going to happen? The price well, you is going to have to go down. But, St uh, uh, Stephen, do you know the main reason why nothing's selling? Why? It's because people can't secure income, can't secure the financing Hello. anymore with the stress testing. Right, I know. So when you can't secure the financing, you always have a drop in the market, right? Yeah. So the market's, uh, you're now, right now, we're looking at an oversupply in the market. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we have an oversupply on the market now, but it's still not a buyer's market. Do you know why? Because the middle okay. class can go nowhere near any of those properties because no one makes anywhere near enough to buy. It's like 80% of people's income just to cover their housing expenses, just to mm. cover. That's not their heat. That's not, that's just 80% for, for housing, shelter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you see a lot of them get duped by real estate agents. And I remember talking to one in Brampton, and he was encouraging me to use my equity to buy an investment property and all of that. And I'm saying to him, like, um, and, and how houses were really selling in Brampton, and I'm saying, how are people affording these houses? And based on what I know and my experience in Canada, um, you, you're not even getting good full-time job here. If you even go to school and you get an education, when you come out, they're giving you elementary level. 
and they're giving you like part time thirty five hours, and they're they're juggling you and juggling people. That's all. That's what's happening right now. Nobody wants to give you a full time job with pay, with benefits and this and that. They just want to juggle you. You come in today. You come in tomorrow, you get 30 hours, the other person get 30 hours, you're not getting your 40 hours, so you can be full-time. And, you know, so I asked this guy, how do you expect people to pay for that? Because after he done sh show me the maths and how you can make money from it, I said, but this doesn't make no sense, my friend, because if you the main thing that drives um, real estate should be income. Mm -hmm. And if people don't have income, then you're going to have a problem later on. And that's exactly what is happening because what a lot of people do or did was to pad up their their um, income. Mm -hmm. You know, you just go and come to Mike and say, Mike, I'm just saying I work for you and I you pay me $22 an hour and write a letter for me. And they go around and they do that. And they pass, and they get the loan, and they buy the house, and that was what, a, what, what it's what really was not true. It was not authentic, and they are discovering that. So um, it's going to backfire on both the lenders, the banks, and it's going to. We're not. We're just seeing. The, 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 it, it's just the tip of the iceberg right now, I believe. Oh, one million percent! It is the tip of the iceberg. It is yeah. the top, and I think we're starting to slope down to one side, but we're still right at the top, and it's got a long way to come down because once affordability is out of reach for the Canadian worker, the average Canadian, good luck. Once the average Canadian can buy in his own cities, good luck. Who's going to pay the taxes to keep those cities going? No, and you know what? And you know what? They raise property taxes to offset it because there's not a lot of people paying taxes. Which is so unfair, eh? Unfair. Unfair is when someone cheats at Monopoly. This is ruining people's lives. Oh uh, yeah, but you know they were they were enjoying it when the prices were booming. You know, um, mm -hmm. I remember in you know in in Ontario here they were enjoying it and saying how much billion millions of dollars they are making from the real estate boom. Mm -hmm. But now there's a bust. So I don't know if they're still enjoying it, but the, the politicians were enjoying what was happening because it was bringing in a lot of um, extra money for them, that revenue for them. You know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, every sale on a house, they're making like a killing, eh? And, like 3 and, 4%, right? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, it was just crazy, man. It was crazy. But I'm glad for it, you know. I. I am happy for it because I made use of it. <laughs> I'm sorry for those who, who are not in the market, but you know, it's economics is, is also cyclical. So that was the boom time, then there come the bust. And so the same thing that happens in the economy, happened in the stock market, real estate. So it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. So, so it, and it's, it's orchestrated by the banks. You're supposed mm -hmm. to know that. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's orchestrated by the banks because the banks, okay, first they lower the interest rate. Okay, hold on a sec. Hold on a second. They lower mm -hmm. interest rate, but they illegally, artificially deflated interest rates to pay off the banks in 2007 and 2008 and using our wealth to pay the banks off in 2007 and 2008. That's what happens mm -hmm. when you lower interest rates is you take the wealth from the common man and give it to the banks and pensioners. And you, and you, right? And you also, uh, when you lower the interest rates, you create a buying frenzy because money is now cheap. Yeah. So everybody is borrowing and everybody is getting into debt. And then little from that now, you same one realize that no, this is getting out of hand. So you, you hike up at the interest rate, and then some people get screwed because when you hike up at the interest rate, people who took on too much debt now find themselves can't pay so they have to file bankruptcy and then you know so it is it this thing is orchestrated by the banks and the government that seeks to um it's like a game of monopoly as you say you know it's a big game you know our lives are a big game mm -hmm. 
but I don't even know if they have any other way out or any other, any other choice. I don't know unless they're going to. I've always been critical of the financial system because it's tantamount to controlling people's lives. Yeah, money, yeah. Yeah. money allow government to control our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that they, oh, you can't speak about any subject except money? You have to make sure you give a disclaimer that yeah. you're not a financial well, advisor. No, no, I mean, I mean, if you speak anything like if you if you if you anything's right leaning or conservative, you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> you understand. So. Why is it that we can talk about just about any subject, but we can't talk about money because you don't want to get into trouble? Because they don't want you to educate people because money, they, um, they know how it works, but most people don't know how it works. So they want to keep people in the darkness because when people are in the darkness, the only way out is to go full of themselves of debt. And when you become indebted, then you know, as the Bible said, the borrower, it says the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Mm -hmm. That's Bible. Mm -hmm. So when you borrow money, you you are now a slave to the banks. Yeah, well, of course, that's a modern day slavery. That's modern day shackles. The invisible, the invisible shackles that are on you. And exactly. and a lot of people think that we've been free, but we're not. We're actually oh, no. slaves to the system. Oh, oh, we're like every time I think about it, Mike. It's like we're kids. We're, we're kids. I mean, when, when I think of how our lives are being monitored, uh, I mean, take for instance, I remember a couple of months ago, I, I walked into a bar and I bought a, a beer. And I walk out of the bar with the beer and hide it under my shirt. And when I, but the girl didn't give me back my change, so I turned back and went to her back for my change. So why did you leave the leave outside, leave the, leave the bar with the, with, with the beer? And she took it from me, and actually threw it away. And I'm saying like, I said I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, a child. I'm, I'm just going next door. I'm like two steps away from my doorway. And I'm saying like, so we're being treated like we're children. You can't walk with a beer bottle. Um, on, on, on in Canada, and uh, you're breaking some kind of law. Oh, you break seven laws. Eh? You already broke seven laws when you walk outside with a beer. They tell you you, you can't spank your own children, yet still if your children grow up to be criminals, they shoot them down and put them into these wicked jail cells. You, you So when you're trying to teach your child the way that they should go and you maybe spank them or discipline them, you're, you hear that you commit a crime against the state and against a child. and But at the same time, if this child is not grown with discipline and turn out to be a criminal, they say one gun them down. Yet yeah. still, I can't use a, a strap on my child, but you can shoot them down. Yeah. How, how, what sense does that make to any thinking person? I know I'm straight off topic here, but you know. No, I know what you're saying. I, it, it's all I know. I know. We're living yeah. in, a, in, a, in a cesspool of deceleration right now. Everything's decelerating. Everything's coming down. The housing yeah, market, yeah. the bond market. Well, the stock bond market's looking somewhat attractive, but the stock market's going down. Yeah, but who, Everything. Want, who, who would want to tie up their money for ten years? For what? How much percent are they offering? Five percent. Two point three percent. Oh, please. 2.3%. You can buy some marijuana stocks and make like that that every day. <laughs> you know, if I had a hundred million dollars, I would tie it up in, in ten year and a ten year bond for a hundred million dollars. Cause you're gonna get twenty twenty five thousand dollars off off every million, right? Mm -hmm. Oh so yeah, if you have that kind of money, yeah, fine. That's what I the rich dude, but I'm talking about for ordinary person that wouldn't spare cents, eh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what what is two percent and three percent? What is that? What can that do? You need Unless high you have... volumes of money to make a, a return on that on those bonds. Can you live off that? Can you pay your bills off that? Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe one day we'll take some time, me and you, and we're gonna look through some of the higher equity paying out uh, some of the higher equity stocks that are paying out. And see what what's a good investment come in the summer when the market starts to uh, 
to correct start seeing some sort of a correction in the stock market maybe because if you got a really good uh equity paying stock that's paying mm -hmm. like seven percent and five percent you're better mm -hmm. off with that dividend dividends yeah you get paid every quarter or every half a year oh yeah seven percent wow that would be a good one i don't do you think the bank stock you would have to really search hard to find that one no i already have a few i i don't want to give uh inf investing information on my channel so i don't get sued but i'll mm -hmm. tell you after when we talk to each other of a couple of stocks that i look at that have a seven percent yield and five percent yield okay yeah yeah well nice start a few if you're getting seven percent um yeah that that, that makes sense yeah yeah that's a good return on investment it is it is and it's a good uh, retirement uh a safe retirement package or something you know what i'm saying if everything yeah. is well yeah. yeah yeah so um this channel that you're broadcasting from now is that your original channel or no this is my backup channel that i go on every saturday and every wednesday until i get back my um uh until i get my thing back until i get uh my main channel back in uh so, april so have youtube given you an explanation as to why they, they stop you well they blocked one one video i did about the housing market in australia and sydney they blocked why? It. i don't why? know it was a three four year old video and they just for some reason said it was a copyright infringement but there's nothing in me there's nothing behind me there's no music there's nothing oh please Oh, please. Um, YouTube is doing a lot of, um, as I was saying, I think even my channel is being sabotaged because I don't know that it's only the first couple of days that I put up um, a video mm -hmm. that it get views. All of a sudden, the views just freeze. All yep. of my video, yep. they, they just freeze. And I'm saying, you mean people only watch it for the first couple of days? You, you you don't have people constantly going and book, meeting up on the video and click on it and look at it. That's that's crazy. No, no, something's not right there. You know, but but it's uh it's not just you and me. There is a lot of people I hear complaining about um, that problem that that a lot of people seem to be coming under um, um, attack from YouTube and yeah. and, and Twitter. And also uh, Patreon. Page, oh yeah, I hear that a lot of people take flight from Patreon. <laughs> I've never used it, but yeah. I hear a lot of people have left the platform because um, the platform. You know yeah. what? We're entering into a totalitarian society, and that is what we're seeing happening, little by little by little. Oh, and I mean, I just talk about housing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not like you're, you're, it's not like you're teaching us to make bombs, to bomb up people. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, but that is the totalitarian society that we're, we're getting into little by little, where it's a dictatorship and they censor who they don't like. And just as long as you're doing stupidness, they like that. Don't educate the people. Don't inform the people. Keep the people in the darkness. Just talk about some... I, I, have you ever checked on what's trending on YouTube? Oh, it's all junk. <laughs> <laughs> it's all junk. <laughs> <laughs> I have always looked at what's trending on YouTube and I can't make any sense of most of those videos because I'm saying, what the hell? And they're getting millions of views. But you see, that is the whole idea. Keep the people in the dark. That's right. Let's not educate them, not turn on the light. And it the housing like, and the housing crisis, like I'm, I've been covering it now. The closer you get to the truth, they want to get rid of you. Yes, and they, they, they manipulate the media um, by, by um, having people come on there and say, telling lies and say, oh, everything is good. And, you know, as you were saying some time ago, oh, it's supply and demand. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, Stephen. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna I'll have you on uh, for for Mike in the night on Saturday night if you have some time. We could go over this whole YouTube scandal and uh, it'd be nice to go over that on Mike in the night because uh, and we'll stay on topic here uh, for the rest of the night with housing. But I want to have you if you can next time. Yeah, on the show. I was all over the place. Eh? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's that no problem. Don't worry. It all ties that. up to the housing in the end. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's so much to talk about, man. Yeah, there is. So, yeah. okay, guys. Okay, um, we'll yeah, keep man. in touch. Make sure you subscribe to my backup channel so you can watch the show. I'm gonna upload it to my main channel later uh -huh. tomorrow. Uh -huh. So this will this video will be on my main channel tomorrow. Okay, no problem, man. Okay, have a good one, Stephen. Keep an eye out on the real estate there in your area and let us know what, if you sell your house. All right. Okay, no have a good night. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Bye. Ciao. Well, that's the Stephen Williams. He's got a powerful channel here. He's got a lot of subscribers on this channel. Where is it? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Right here. The Stephen Williams Show. He's got almost 8,000 subscribers. He's got a really good... He talks about housing on here, Canada's debt risk, stock market crash, Bitcoin price predictions, Dave Ramsey's financial peace, uh, how to buy a second house refinancing, Go for what you want. Yeah, there's a lot of good videos on here. Uh, lots of good videos. Canadian's Debt Problem Part 1. So he, he puts a lot of time into his channel. He actually does a lot of editing. I like this one here. Where's the one with the Titanic? Unless, unless YouTube took it down. Yeah, it's gone. He has one here with the Titanic. There it is. This one. This is a really good one. Warning. Mighty ship will sink. And it talks about how basically... Things are on a huge decline right now with YouTube and censoring people. Anyways, okay. What is happening? Migrant surge impacting Texas housing. Professor Todd Curry from the University of Texas, El Paso is one of them. I don't have any medical skills whatsoever. That's not at all my background. Um, but I can organize people and I can raise money. Their work has provided a service the city can't meet. Due to federal guidelines, the city can only activate shelters during an emergency. And the state hasn't declared one yet. For now, the migrants are being housed in a network of shelters operated by Annunciation House. We're using hotels, we're using community sites because the sheer volume all at one time is something we haven't seen before. They believe this surge, the highest they've ever seen, is related to the number of illegal crossings. A Department of Homeland Security spokesperson says since 2015, there's been a 169% increase in the number of families illegally crossing the border. And because of a decades-old court agreement called the Flores Settlement, ICE says they can only detain families for a limited period of time. So this is happening, and it's causing a huge problem in the housing crisis impacting texas right now so there's 2300 people in coming in per week that's 500 per day and it's putting a strain on shelters housing accommodation and reserve emergency housing wow so that's happening in south texas right now and southern nevada housing market may be cooling off hallelujah look at that beautiful house so if you're living in australia see that house right there look at that Beautiful. $295,000. You know how much that house is in Sydney? <laughs> like 4 million, 5 million bucks. And Vancouver, 10 million bucks for that house. And that's what's happening. And the price of local condos and townhomes are going down too in Nevada. Nevada saw a massive price peak. In the tail end of October, November of 2018, when people were moving there from California. Don't look now. You're almost certainly poorer than a year ago. Oh my God, what is going on, people? I'm sorry to kick off the new year with such gloomy news and finances. It is never nice to discuss how much money you have lost. But if you are a homeowner in Sydney or Melbourne, Perth or Darwin, and if you have a super annual nest egg, the odds are you're less wealthy today than you were a year or two ago. The Australian market, where the bulk of your superannuation assets are likely to be invested, has slumped 11% since August, reducing the value of stocks by around $200 billion. Wow, imagine $200 billion of wealth wiped out. Woo! That's huge! Ouch! While those in most financial pain are those who bought at the top of the market. So here's the problem. A lot of people bought at the top of the market. That's the problem! A lot of people went, ah, I'm going to buy... 
this market's not crashing. I'm going to go in and buy. And where are they now? Jeff O'Toole saying, uh, man, are, are we screwed in the GTA? Oh, the GTA is, um, oh yeah, it's getting pretty bad. Aussie Prepper says we need deeper water around Australia. Dumb Data is in Vaughn saying, yep, I'm in Vaughn and it's getting bad. Dumb Data, if you want to um, add me to Skype, please come on, come on the show sometime. Uh, it's Mike Martin's 1980. Oh, there's Elliot Rogers in the comments. He's threatening to kill my family. He's just, uh, I don't know why there's somebody um, uh, threatening me on this channel like this. So I, I don't know why um, somebody is doing this. Um, I will be reporting this to the police when I get off the show because... I got no life and I'm going to pursue this. So whoever's doing this, if you got a nice, what you might call it, IP scrubber and you've got some, some encodedness, I will find him. I will find him. Oh yeah. I'm going to find you. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, look at this. I took screenshots of everything. Everything, everywhere it comes from a destination, especially now if you're actually blocking your IP. There's actually a new software that goes around anything that's blocking any IP now. We will find you and we're going to make it very public. Yep. Someone's asking, is Niagara Falls close to GTA? 40-minute drive. Okay, Steve is on in, in the house. Steve, call in whenever you feel like it. Call in, buddy, when you feel like it. Yeah, so this Elliot Rogers saying, I'm going to kill your family. I'm going to shoot your kid. I'm going to kill your uh, wife. So somebody with three different accounts been threatening me and they've been threatening Walking Journey 2 on the show. But I'm going to find you. Oh, man. Oof. I'll pay 30 grand to find you. So if you're just jumping on the show right now, someone's been in the comments section. I I'll make a video after this, guys. I got screenshots of everything here. And anything you do online will be tracked. It doesn't matter what, what you think, how far away you could get or how far you could get with doing what you, um, you know, what you think you could get away with. Ooh, it's going to be good. Gary Madero's two-time world champ in on the channel. Uh, Real Kevin Thompson. Real Kevin Thompson in the... Real Kevin Thompson never misses an episode. And... Wow, Mobi. No, no. Elliot Rogers not threatening you, Steve. He's been threatening me and, and Walking Journey in the comment section. Yeah. But I'll pay... I'll pay I'll pay to find out who this is. Oh, I'll pay. I'll pay through the nose. But when I find out who's threatening my kids and my wife... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be good. Oh, what? You're deleting your account now? We're still going to find you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So we're waiting for... Um, Alberta. I got a story here from Alberta. Hold on. Let's move this on. Let's move along. Let's move along. Let's move along, guys. Luxury home sales in Toronto and Vancouver and Calgary fell sharply in 2018. Seattle housing prices improved, but still not a buyer's market because prices are out of reach in Seattle and everyone's moving east. Housing bubble trouble in Silicon Valley, San Francisco. Right now, uh, 
look at how many listings are on the market, active listings. Holy, back in 2017, there was nothing on the market. It was next to impossible to buy in, in, in San Francisco. It was anything that went on the market sold within hours, if not a day. Now, look at what's on the market in San Francisco. It's just blowing up right now in San Francisco. Uh, Elliot Rogers said, I'm not deleting my account. I'm 14 years old and I'm just kidding. You shouldn't take things so serious. I'm just a troll. Oh, we're just getting started, sweetheart. Oh, oh, oh. we're just getting started. You want to threaten me and my family? Uh, we're just getting started, sweet pea. So someone's uh, putting up racial words here in the trolls. Uh, in the comment section here. Yeah, there's a lot going on here tonight. So, inventory for home sales spikes. So, San Francisco, what, 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 what? All the houses on the market. Back in the day, you couldn't find nothing in San Francisco. Let's move it on. We are entering a housing crisis. Montreal ramps up fight against Airbnb. Illegal short-term rentals. Look at all the convicts here they have. Look. For all this Airbnb. Montreal is taking steps to further crack down on illegal short-term rentals in the big city by removing key safe left in public property. As Global's Phil Carpenter reports, city officials say the, proper, uh, the problem is increasing and creating shortages in the rental market. Well, they got to prepare themselves... Whoa, the place got trashed. Dynamic duo Sebastian Clovis and Sabrina Smelko. Oh, there's a, a little bit of music in this. I hope it doesn't flag my video. Yep. in Canada who rent their places on Airbnb. It's one among dozens of home sharing websites in Canada offering rooms, suites, even trailers up for short-term rentals. With an average income of about $5,500 a year, there's a big appeal for homeowners, but there are some considerations that uh, you should look into before you open your doors. And that is why we are joined now by Alyssa Furtado, the CEO of RateHub.ca, uh, joining us from Toronto this morning. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Alyssa, a lot of money to be made with home sharing, but there are risks that come with that. Yeah, definitely. So most home insurance policies don't cover you when you're renting your home out on Airbnb. And so that's one of the biggest things we want Canadians to know. Uh, it's important to check if your insurance covers you. It's probably going to be a no, but then make sure you've got home insurance in place that is comfortable with the fact that you're home sharing. All right, so what kind of uh, protection does Airbnb offer then themselves? Are there any sort of damage deposits or insurance that you can get through them? Yeah, they offer a few things. So one, you can set a damage deposit when you're setting up your listing. And then there's two types of insurance that they offer. First, the host guarantee protects you in the case that you have any damage to your home or your belongings in your home. And then secondly, there's a p program in place that gives you up to a million dollars if there happen to be any kind of third liability claims. So that's that with Airbnb. So people are not being covered. And where's that picture of that place was completely trashed. What was the photo of that? It was, it was, it was up uh, here in the video. Let's see. For insurer, even if there aren't guests in your home when damage happens, technically you've changed the contract that you made with your insurance company. So we're big believers in being super transparent with your insurance company. Let them know that you're home sharing just in the event that anything were to happen with an Airbnb guest or not, you're very covered. Um, and there's... Yeah, so guys, keep keep aware with this whole uh, uh, thing here with this Airbnb and what's going on. Be really careful, guys, when you're renting out your place. All right, let's move on. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to Justin Cringe channel, Walking Journey, Uneducated Economist, 
Bank of Queensland raises interest rates for home loans out of cycle. So again, in Australia, one bank, the Bank of Queensland, BOQ, is the first lender to raise interest rates on its home loan products in 2019. But experts say it's not necessarily a move designed to solely for profit. When banks start to raise rates themselves, it shows that the pressure inside. So the overall... Uh, uh, lending the overall night. Sorry, I got to remove Stephen Williams off here. I still have his uh, little thing open here with his name. Let me get rid of that there. There you go. Um, it doesn't matter. Banks are on their own grounds if they want to raise interest rates. A lot of banks um, lower interest rates to attract more customers or to attract more clientele through the door. But this bank, you know, probably has enough on their books that they're going to start saying, you know what, let's start making some money and raising rates here, you know? And when you see this happening, it's definitely not a good time to buy a house because, um, yeah, it's out of control. Calgary housing market takes a hit as oil patch loses uh, losses return. So job losses return. Calgary concerns about fresh job losses violate oil prices and lower capital spending and weighing on Calgary's real estate market and economists predict another slow year for home sales and following falling prices in the city. Statistics Canada, Canada labor force data for December showed Alberta a lost 16,900 jobs between November and December. Wow! 16,900 jobs? November and December, the province's unemployment rate quick ticked slightly upward to 6.4% from 6.3%. In Calgary, the head office capital of Canadian oil patch and unemployment rate declined to 7.6% in December from 7.9%, but November, but still higher than it was a year earlier at 7.5%. Wow, so Alberta, especially, oh, Calgary, sorry guys. Yeah, Steve the Plumber is going to be calling in two minutes. Canada's National Housing Agency CEO stress tests are better than losing your home. So what's going on? Well, you know what, guys? They stress test you to protect you. They don't stress test you because they don't like you. They stress test you so you don't lose your house. Oh, you're doing this stress test. You're just doing this so I don't get to get a good to live in my house. Well, you know what? You're going to lose that house if you don't stress test. Twas the night before Christmas when throughout the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Well, except for Evan Sandal. Fine. It was the afternoon and he was on his Twitter. On Christmas Eve, the CEO of Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation defended mortgage stress testing. The head of the agency warned first time buyers that stress test is unfair, but it's better than risking your home. From whom, from where? Evan is everyone's favorite renter slash former Goldman Sachs executive that has that happens to be the CEO of the CMHC for our new readers. CMHC is the crown corporate that acts as Canada's national housing agency. They plan an important they play an important role in providing mortgage liquidity. Who who he is is pretty important for the context here. He's not a short seller, your real estate agent convinced you you might have another angle. He's not someone that's jealous of your 300 square foot condo with the combination bathroom kitchen. <laughs> combination bathroom kitchen. This person who the government appointed to help you get a mortgage to buy a home and help banks manage risks. Sucks to be stress tested, but it's better than losing your home. Important advice, very important, especially when you put down, you got to put down big down payments. 12 month percentage change for price of typical home across Canada. Look at that. Holy crap. It's going in all into negative territories right now. So anything anyone gained after, so right here was the peak. Oh, they lost everything. Vancouver is seeing huge, uh, uh, this is real estate prices. Yeah. 12 month change. Wow. Toronto, Canada as a whole. 
Towards the end of the real estate cycle, gains tend to taper and turn negative. This is especially true after a large run in real estate prices after gains may be exhausted. Uh, Sidal isn't making a statement on whether we're at peak yet. However, he does appear to be saying you'll be glad there was a stress test if we are. So basically, they want to start protecting people. So if they start to fall behind on their payments and stuff, they can't blame the banks. They can't blame anybody. But but this way, when they're stress tested, they add a few percentage on to make sure they could do this. They can make it work. Because the last thing they want to do, they should have been stress testing since the time of Moses, since the time of Jesus. I don't know why they're putting these laws into place now. This is like typical practice to protect the consumer and to protect the bank in both interests. But the bank doesn't care. Oh, we're insured. So if he defaults, we get the house and we get the insurance. Who cares? So comments are buzzing up again. 33 people watching on my backup channel, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Get this channel out there, guys, so people know that this is my backup channel. Unfortunately, I got to wait three more months. I got to wait three more months till my backup channel, my, my main channel is back up and running until my, my co community copyright strike is released. Okay, guys, we got Steve on the phone. Steve. Hey, Mike. How are you? Can you me? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. What are you up to, bud? Uh, just actually on the way home. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so you got a lot of... Uh, okay, I got this article open right now. Canada's National Housing Agency. Stress test is better than losing your home. So that was a tweet that was sent out by um, Evan uh, Evan Sedell, the president of CMHC. Yeah, CMHC. yeah he was basically yeah. saying... You know what? Let us stress test you so you don't end up losing your home in six months or a year. You know what I'm saying? So well, I mean, that's. Uh, uh, I'm not a fan of uh, Mr. Sedell there, but uh, from time to time he does say a few things that make sense. And uh, those that, that statement right there is very much so true, but there's some underlining uh, information there. Um, you know, they're, they're stress testing people so that they uh, come back down to reality. And there's some sort of a buffer um, when lending. Um, that's that, that it's more to protect the bank than uh, than the actual consumer. Um, but by the same token, um, you know the consumer, outside of the insurance realm of things, uh, from a CMHC standpoint, uh, truly was over leveraged. No, yeah, of course, severely over leveraged, and and uh, it's it's. It should be illegal to do that. They know the bankers, like I was telling at the beginning of the show, how when you got a good underwriter, you know, and you got a good uh, uh, branch manager, they can look at the deal and they can tell if it's going to fall apart within six months without even uh, batting an eyelash. They could know if the deal is going to work or not in six months or if he's going to default within a year or two. They could tell. And they know that these are bad deals they're putting on the books, but why are they allowing it, Steve? Well, when everything was going up and up and up, um, a lot of loan officers were uh, were approving loans because you know they saw this this ongoing trend that house prices just continued to go up and up and up. So they thought that they were secure. You know, they approved somebody, you know, Mr. Smith for uh, you know, or Mr. Thompson for you know, three years or a five year mortgage, and next thing you know, all of a sudden. Um, you know, the tide or the current changes and, um, you know, people's houses aren't going up uh, at, you know, 15, 20, 30 percent year over year. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big, big problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rainier Mola saying uh, they released a huge report yesterday that found that Canada is the third biggest nation to have the most millionaires moving in. Yes. And again, I said to you guys, a lot of people moving in from China. Uh, with a lot of money, and it's a lucrative business for Canada. And this is the article here. I'll bring it up here real quick. This is it. This is a very, very big article, and it's still up. And it's been updated several... Oh, please don't don't take this article down. Canada wants more Chinese workers, students, 
and they bring big money and it says right here canada's paying canada's paying with our tax money to bring in five hundred thousand dollars a year and opening more visa offices to compete for chinese wealth yeah so that's it right there on the cbc so i kind of wanted to throw that out there guys continue steve yeah um so it's uh it's been one wild ride since last week we've uh we got a rate announcement uh, today that they're basically going to be uh, spinning the course for a little bit, a uh, little bit longer. Um, at the end of uh, his submissions, Mr. Polos, I guess had uh, went ahead and guaranteed everybody that uh, rates will uh, will eventually rise. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't give any indication of timing or whatnot, but uh, you know people need to uh, definitely expect rates to be normalized. And uh, normalized, you know, our neutral rates are between two and a half and three and a half percent. Um, I don't think we'll get there this year. Uh, in fact, I can pretty much confirm we won't get there this year, in my opinion. Um, I think we'll uh, we'll probably see one uh, one rate hike if we're lucky. Well, the problem is, it doesn't matter if they raise rates or not anymore. We Okay, let's say they don't raise rates. Let's just say arguably Canada's not raising rates. We're going to be like Australia. We're not raising rates. No one's raising rates, okay? But it doesn't matter. We're going to fall behind the U.S. And we're going to be in a lot of trouble because the middle class can't afford to buy. The middle class in the U.S. could still buy an average home for under 200000 We can't in Canada. You have to be hundreds and hundreds of miles outside of a major city to be able to afford anything. That's correct. I think um, today's meeting with the Bank of Canada solidified a couple of things. Um, one in particular, they know exactly what's going on. Um, they know that the housing market is receding um, and they know that prices are declining first and foremost. Mm -hmm. They're very, very skeptical and uneasy about the current uh, economic future with respect to GDP. Uh, in actual fact, they downgraded it and said that uh, our growth uh, is going to be at 1.7 this year. Um, I firmly believe that number will come down even further. Um, but make no mistake, when a central bank goes ahead and starts to say, you know, things are, 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 are not what we thought they were and they have to start retracting their statements and, you know, reevaluating the output gap um, with respect to the economy and growth. Uh, that basically solidifies we are in a recession, ladies and gentlemen. Steve, 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 we're in a depression. We're in a depressionary uh, universal decline in Canada, especially in Canada. Because, Steve, we are, we're moving so far away from the prize, our eye on the prize. We're moving so far away from the basics that it's destroying the fabric of our communities. And what do, what do I mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. When the average person that makes a six-figure income can't afford to live in his own city that he was born and raised in, Steve, we got a major problem, buddy. And it's, it's, it's a lot worse than a depression. This is... This is going to be one of the biggest events that's going to affect every human being in the country of Canada. Whether you're homeless, whether you're couch surfing, whether you're renting, whether you own, whether you're subletting, whatever you're doing, you, everyone's going to be affected by this. And I think, Steve, Steve, if you make six figures and you're a doctor and you're leaving Vancouver to move to Minnesota or you're moving where that other guy said he was going to move to, uh, 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 Kansas City? Because you found you found a, a ten bedroom house there for under two hundred thousand dollars, and you moved to Kansas City because you're going to find a better life there, and you're a doctor, and you're very needed in BC hospitals. But you're leaving because your six figure income doesn't doesn't get you nowhere. Steve, we got ourselves a major problem. Well, I have to agree with you one hundred and fifty percent. I think we have uh, we've had this problem for quite some time. Um, the banks should not have cut rates when they did. Um, you know, a few, if, if anything, they should have raised rates um, because now if, if they were going to play the game, we would need, um, you know, we, we, would, we would need quantitative easing here. 
uh, 150%. There's no way that they can cut rates right now. If they cut rates, our dollar will go completely flat. It will tank like oh, nobody We're lives. gonna have a 65 cent dollar if we if if they slash rates. Well, if you go on if you go on BNN Bloomberg right now, David Rosenberg, chief economist for Glass and Chef, had uh, had a piece on there. It is a fantastic uh, segment, and he basically calls it as he sees it. And he's right more often times than he's not. And he basically, in a nutshell, said, "Don't get over you know excited about the U about the Canadian dollar spiking." Um, this is very temporary. The dollar is going down. Well, no, it spiked because of because of they they, they put a hold on uh, interest rate hike. Remember, so the markets did well today, and so did the Feds, right? So that that's going to basically uh, uh, stimulate the market somewhat in the stock market and the bond market, right, and the gold market. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I, I understand what you're saying there. Um, the Canadian, um, you know, the Bank of Canada has a very good indication. In actual fact, I think they know more, well, they have to know more than what they lead on. Um, and they're basically, they're in, a, they're in a holding pattern because if they move to the left or move to the right, mass panic will set in. Yeah. So here's the problem. They can't, they can't deflate rates because they've, okay, but Steve, here's the problem. Now let's go back to square one. This all branches out from 2007 with bad lending practices, all this Mickey Mouse crap, and artificially uh, lowering interest rates. Canada jumped on the bandwagon and artificially lowered their interest rates. Australia, the UK, New Zealand, they all brought down rates and to stimulate the economy and get people spending. But the problem with that is we have never done that before in human history, Steve. So we don't know what the repercussions are going to be right now in 2019. I'll tell you what the repercussions are. I was told by a very, very respectable person within the lending practice in Canada. You can, and I was told this this evening, you can bet your left nut, okay, for lack of a better term, that house prices in the greater Vancouver, more so in Toronto, he's making reference to, the greater Toronto area, including Toronto proper, um, especially um, the outskirts of Toronto proper, you will see house prices go back to 2009 levels, guaranteed, plus or minus a year. Could be 08 levels, could be 2010 levels. Steve, do you know what the prices are going to go to, Steve? Can I tell you what the prices are going to go to? With the go With the medium... Household income of eighty thousand could purchase. Okay, so I I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Eighty thousand. Okay, that's what, what you're saying is that's combined household income. Yeah. Okay, so let's be very specific here, Mike, because um, that will be your average what condo semi detached. Yep. Yeah. Average home. Fair why are people paying absorbent mansion prices for a bungalow? I understand that. I, I get it. There will always be, Mike, and we have to we have to agree with this. There will always be multi million dollar homes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's a question of what does that multi million dollar home look like today, and what will it look like in six to, six to twelve months from now? It will be two totally different things. Mm -hmm. Well, but Steve, if people can't afford to secure financing on the multi-million dollar, people don't make money to buy a multi-million dollar home. That's the problem. That's why 80% of people's wages are going towards shelter. Okay. Does that make sense? It's got to go down because once the middle class is not buying... You don't have any more. You don't have a housing market anymore. Once the middle class is bought out, houses aren't selling now for 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 living. Now I want to have you on the phone because because and I'm going to tell you right now because I have an article I'm going to read for you right now. I'm, not, I'm going to read the title for you right now, Steve. Are you ready? Let her rip, buddy. Okay, guys. I've been holding this article all day. 
to rip it right now. We got 36 people watching on my backup channel. Here goes. Half of Vancouver property owners have filed empty tax declarations. Do you know what that means? Half of the houses are empty in Vancouver. Wow. Do you know that's half the city is gone. Half of Vancouver property owners have filed empty home tax declaration. The city is an empty shell, Steve. It's an empty shell. Wow. Half. Because they have until February, until... Yeah, they need to be submitted by February 4th. If they do not submit by uh, February 4th, they will be at uh, the assessed value and they will have to pay penalties. So now, if you have a vacant home in, Vancou in Vancouver, you must have your deadline is February 4th to bring it in. Half of Vancouver owners have filed empty homes tax declaration. That's just the ones that filed it, Steve. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Interesting. Very interesting. Are you there, Mike? I'm right here. I'm just trying to digest that. Half. Not 10% of homes. Not 25%. Half, dude. Half. Do you understand? Half the city doesn't live there anymore. They commute to the city. That's phenomenal. I've never heard anything this big. And this is coming from the Vancouver Courier. This is the newspaper they give for free when you go on the SkyTrain and when you're downtown. They give This is a free newspaper they give out to, I guess, to the masses, right? I, I, I'm going to, I can't believe it. Residential property owners must submit declarations annually or face having their properties deemed vacant and be subject to the empty homes tax, which sits on 1% of the property of 2018 assessed taxable value. And property taxes went up in Vancouver, too! Yeah, it's going to be a gong show there, my friend. Oh, and yeah, um, so, so far, as of January 7th, 94,685 property owners have submitted declarations. Almost 100,000 empty units. Dude, this is, you don't understand how much, this is, you know when you put nails in the coffin? This is the nine inch nail that's going in the coffin that will never open this casket again. This is how sealed we are in this doom right now. The city says that the most properties won't be subject to the empty homes tax, including when a property is used as a principal residence by the owner. Of course it's not. But can you believe half, Steve? Steve, you got to say something about this, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, I just, I can't. Say something. Well, I will say anybody that owns real estate in Vancouver, uh, Vancouver proper, where all of this is going on, and they are a Canadian citizen um, or Canadian proper, um, is in a lot of trouble. Because at this point, you no longer have um, the majority of the Canadian proper owning real estate. So you basically what you're saying what this basically solidifies and what you're saying what this article is saying um anecdotally that is is that all these vacant homes they are not people's primary residences they are not you know canadian proper uh lo you know local investment even if they were speculating mike mm -hmm. okay even if they were speculating this is about to blow up so big so quick, so fast in Vancouver, it's not even funny. Can you imagine, okay, going ahead and owning property and thinking that, you know, maybe 10, 20% is foreign investment. Mm -hmm. But if you're telling me 50% of those properties are vacant, okay, well, and the majority of it in actual fact is yeah. foreign investment, yeah speculation maybe even maybe even local speculation mm -hmm. 
okay? That just basically solidifies that you own property in, in a house of cards. Like, it, it, it's all going to come down. And this is just filed by Empty Homes Tax Declaration. So this is what's been filed. And you know there's a lot of them that, oh, they'll never catch me. I just won't file anything. So that's 94,685 property owners of vacancy. That's three people wow. per house. That's 300,000 people have been displaced. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very troubling. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's funny, Jeff O'Toole start moving homeless uh, into Asian penthouse. Send the bill to the owners. You know what? I agree. There's so many, so many people that are on the streets in Toronto, uh, in Vancouver. Um, yeah, I, uh, I wish we had the power to go ahead and uh, see these homes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, France, France fixed that problem. Remember that article I kept reading about France raised their property taxes, raised vacant home tax times three. And because their city was turning into an empty shell, and F France yep. was 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 uh, having this problem, and uh, one in two homes were completely empty in Paris. Wow. Yeah. They even have a phone number here. Staff are available to, to assist homeowners online with declarations at City Hall. Property owners can also declare by calling this phone number here and speaking to citizen service representation and translation services are also available. I'd love to know how many empty vacant homes we have in the greater Toronto area. Well, and I, I'm not just talking about the buildings that don't have any lights on them, mm -hmm. you know, for months and months and months and months. Let's look this up. Um, I, I, I brought this up before and, and, and um, yeah, here it is. This is what they think they have. This is what they think they have, okay? Yeah. Toronto has 99,000 unoccupied homes. i double it. You think so? i double it. I'd actually, I would absolutely double it. Yeah. We did one, uh, we did one tonight. It was, uh, it was foreign money. They walked away. Um, and, uh, yeah, but you, you could tell the house was completely vacant. Um, oh, a foreclosure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you did a for yeah. Yeah, and, and there was nobody living there. You and, and the neighbors, have, you know, all came out. Oh, you know, I, I guess the bank is is here to take back the house. It's like, well, yes, uh, you know that that is what's happening. I can't really comment on it. Just nobody's lived there in a year and a half since the old owners sold. Holy they were in their seventies. Holy smokes. And of course, it's 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 an Asian name on title. Mm -hmm. Um and it's uh it, it's a foreign buyer for sure. It has to be Mike. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's no one there to claim the property or pay make payments or no one's around and the place has been vacant for two years, it's awfully obviously an investment, right? Well, it well, the yeah, once upon a time it it, it was uh, an investment, but clearly somebody walked away because it wasn't such an investment anymore. Yeah, they're losing their shirts. So but that again, we don't know. We don't know everybody's position. I mean, the guy that owns it could be dead for all we know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. I know. I'm. I'm not saying you know. Um, half of Vancouver property owners have filed empty home tax declarations. Holy crap, Steve! Holy crap! Imagine if they rented all these properties out to people that needed rent. It'll bring down the price of rent drastically. It'll bring down the price of rent 50%. If they put 94,685 properties on the rental market, you'll see the price of rent go to rock bottom. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, yeah, I, I can see where, uh, where you're coming from there. There's a couple of things. Um, that I did want to mention to you, Mike. Um, I asked some further clarification on OSFI um, in terms of where they're going, where they're heading. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually uh, quite funny. Uh, Jeremy uh, Oldman uh, just said in the comment section, no one loses 
unless they have to sell. If they hold for 10 years plus, it's always a good deal. Okay, so I, we need to clarify something here. That is true to a certain degree, okay? But 10 years is a long time. Lots, lots can happen in 10 years. So, for example, if you bought at the, the peak of the market, okay, and you've now lost, you know, a, a good uh, 20%, okay, 10 to 20%, whichever one you want to call it. Are you with me, Mike? I'm right here. Offsy is now taking the approach where in the event that you are going to secure uh, on the basis of your home. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to the bank, you're going to a chartered bank for a loan. Okay. And let's say you have some equity in it. Okay. Right. Right. And they say, well, you know what? Mr. Thompson, you got equity in your home. Um, yeah, you want a, a line of credit or something along those lines for 100K, for example. Um, yeah, it still leaves us in a good position. You know, th that's fine. Um, you know, we're going to lend you the money. Now, at the same point in time, what's actually going to happen is as they're, they're, they're trying to come up with some sort of a threshold. So let's say that threshold is $25,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything under twenty five thousand dollars, okay, is not going to be subjected to what I'm about to say. Mm. Now, anything under anything under five grand or less usually doesn't have to be secured by an asset. Mm -hmm. So let's say twenty, you know, twenty five percent. They're going to loan on the basis of the equity in your home. Okay. Right. Um, they're not going to go. You know, they may or may not get an, uh, an appraisal, so on and so forth. The moment you go over $25,000, they are now going to appraise your home and make sure that the value is there, okay, as per your mortgage, okay? First and foremost, and the equity that you, you, you actually think you have. Yeah. Okay? Now, let's say you don't have that equity, okay? You have less equity, for, just for argument's sake. And it's going to take... 10 years, allegedly, for the market to come back up and, you know, everything's going to be fine and any, any equity that you may have lost, they are now going to go ahead and say, all right, Mr. Thompson, you, your, your equity has basically, you know, declined as a direct result of your house going down in value. They are actually going to go ahead and take that value and apply it to your total debt service ratio. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. But the problem is, Steve, if you let's say you hold a property like this, I'm watching the um, the comments go through here. But you're still making those high payments or uh, overly pay. You're still carrying the balance of a million dollars. So if let's say you borrow, the house goes down to six hundred, and it's going to take ten years to go back up to a million. You're still paying interest on that million dollars, Steve. And that's what people are failing to see. So you're still paying uh, payments, mortgage payments on these absorbent amounts of, of, of housing when you could buy at the bottom at, with a better rate. And then uh, you, you know what I'm trying to say, right, Steve? Yes, I understand exactly what you're so trying to say. You don't want to carry a million dollar debt for 10 years. There's, there, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. Only if it's at rock bottom prices, uh, interest rates. Yeah, if money's cheap, you know what? A million bucks. Not not hard to float. Um, I mean, if, if you're making a combined household income of eighty grand or a hundred grand, right. yeah, you got no business swimming in those waters. Right. Um, but if you're making two, three hundred large, um, you know what? Yeah, okay. You know what? You want to take the chance on it? Be my guest. It's risky because rates don't stay low forever. Mm -hmm. They can't. Okay. But um, I know for a fact, and I'm trying to. I don't know who said this. Um, but I, I, I did see this in the comment section in efforts to be transparent. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the Bank of Canada, uh, J, uh, Jason from Windsor, uh, the Bank of Canada chairman said that people that bought in 2015 are in a lot of trouble and they expect foreclosures. So that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. uh, 2015 um, to roughly about 20, 2017, the peak of the market, right. that is a very, very difficult time for a lot of people now. 
Well, do the math. 26,000 homes on average sold, uh, let's say 58,000 sold in the GTA that year. And then 2016, about 60,000. And let's arguably say 54,000 in 2017. That's a lot of homes to foreclose on. It's only gonna. It's only gonna get worse. That's a lot of foreclosures, buddy. That's a lot because on average, the uh, the amount of average homes that sell in a year that's phenomenal. Uh, even let's say fifty percent of of that, that's a lot. You know, even if people put down a healthy down payment, they still lost all that wealth because of the, the decline. I agree, Mike. I just need to clear the air here with uh, the real Kevin Thompson. Mm -hmm. Um. You're right. I know nothing about money, foreclosures, uh, mortgages, or anything else like that. But what I do know is what I'm seeing in terms of the repossessions, foreclosures, whatever you want to call it, that I'm going to be involved with over the next month or so, um, the majority of them are not Canadian, are not basically part of the five big banks in Canada. It is all B lenders and private money. I would say 80% of it, 80% are B lenders and private money, okay? So your tiered system about the lenders and you know private lenders and, and B lenders don't care about that. You know what? They might not have cared about certain things before, but they're starting to care now mm -hmm. because they're having to repossess houses. They're trying to secure their position because people can't pay these mortgages back. And when you go private money, you're not getting, mm -hmm. you know, 4%, 5%. People yeah. are taking loans at 10 and 15%. Oh, yeah. ten. Remember that one, the video we saw together about that lady that was paying a second mortgage for 10% on 100000 That's 10000 bucks a year. <laughs> Anyways, that's basically where we're at. Um a lot of private money, a lot of B lenders, um, regrettably, are now having to uh, to take back their homes because people just can't do it. Steve, Steve, stop the press. Property property taxes floor Burn Burnaby tile maker after soaring assessments. So now that property taxes are going up, it's it's affecting um, uh, uh, res um, sorry commercial and um, industry uh, industrial areas. Listen to this. Listen to this. On January 8th, less than a week after receiving the assessment notice, his 41-year-old tile manufacturing business in Burnaby called his 100 staff members together to break the bad news. Our property tax bill this year will be $496,000. And I don't have the money, and I need to have to say here past July when the property pack taxes due so he's going to close his company once the once the property taxes due he's going to close he was paying eleven thousand eight hundred and thirty a year earlier now it's forty one thousand six hundred and twenty a year later why because of the stupid housing crisis and everybody leaving the city no one paying taxes and a lot of these investors don't want to pay taxes and then and now well, look what's happening they're going to have to pay they're going to have to raise property taxes now it's affecting industry and it's affecting commercial properties yeah the price of poker is just going to continue to go up and up and up and i also want to clear the air here and i'm not trying to pick on uh, on kevin thompson um you know he's just you know nobody walks away from a you know 100k um with in terms of equity so on and so forth you know what that's incorrect because a lot of people have equity in their homes and then all of a sudden their capacity to repay um disappears mm -hmm. and you know what they can't sell the property okay it takes it doesn't take you know a week two weeks to sell the property it takes a little while a, a little bit longer and then people have this false note, oh things are going to get better oh i'm, I'm going to borrow money i'm going to do this well when the well is dry the well is dry okay you can't refinance you can't do this that's what's happening right now. Just because people have equity in their house doesn't mean that they're not going to get foreclosed on. Doesn't mean that they that they can't that they don't have to walk away. Yeah, no, I, I, I get where you're coming from. This, yeah, Kevin Thompson can accept the truth. So this is a big deal. I'm sorry, I gotta come back to this. Yep. 
he he paid he has to pay forty one thousand six hundred and twenty for property tax, and he only paid eleven thousand eight hundred and thirty last year. His taxes went up thirty thousand a year, and he's yeah. got he's got to lay off thir- uh, how many people a hundred hundred plus staff members. Steve, this is a big deal because you know what you know you know what you know what's fueling this problem now. It's the stupid housing market. So now everybody across the board has to pay for this housing this housing fiasco. Okay, next article: four million dollar plus home sales in Vancouver plummet by half in twenty eighteen. So four million dollar homes, guys. So guys, guys living in the states, these aren't mansions. This is just like a house for four million bucks, like a five bedroom, three bath. Like a, a nice house. I have to admit, it's probably a nice house for four million bucks. Yeah, but 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 it's not. But that same house in 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 Arizona is like eight hundred, four hundred grand. Yeah, there we okay. go. There we go. Crashing. Anything over four million bucks is cut in half right now. No one's buying. Metro Vancouver new home sales down nineteen percent in twenty eighteen and will fall more, says report. They're forecasting another 33%, uh, sorry, 13% drop in 2019. Wow. Yeah. This is, this is really bad, Steve. How old is that article? Uh, January 9th, 2019, 2 33 p.m. Okay, so it's only a few hours old. Yeah. Airbnb draining 6,500 homes from Toronto, housing market group says in your report. Stop blaming Airbnb and people renting their homes out, please. Please, start focusing on the 100,000 empty homes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but anybody who rents their, uh, anybody who's listening to this right now um, regarding Airbnb, I'm not going to tell you to do it or not do it, but I am going to give you some some good sound advice. You can take this to the bank, preferably just take it to your your insurance agent. Please ask them if you are covered for um, renting your house out on Airbnb for short term rental. Yeah, I. I are they going to tell you no? Yeah, I, I I read the article about an hour ago. Uh, that article okay, was a, a very important that that was read. And I played a little bit of the story uh, that they were doing there. So I wanted to make sure people were covered on what is happening. Man, Steve, I'm going to bring this up again. Half of Vancouver property owners have filed empty homes tax declarations. Oh, my God. I'm not going to sleep tonight with this. This is a big deal. Wow. That's a bombshell. That's huge. Half. That is very much so. That is that is absolutely crazy. Mike, keep uh, keep reading your articles. Just hang on one second. I gotta. Uh, I just gotta put you on hold. Hang on. Yeah, sure. So Steve is taking a bathroom break. So guys, don't forget to uh, subscribe to Stephen the Stephen Williams show. He's a really good guy. I like this guy a lot. He's uh, he's on the ball with everything. He knows what's going on. And the sad part, look, look, he's got almost 8,000 subscribers. Watch this. 18 views, 16 views. What's this one here? 15 views, 26 views. That's impossible. That is impossible. Okay. So this is the, the the recent trends thing we have here, transaction we have from the or findings we have for Toronto has over ninety nine thousand unoccupied homes. Yep, that's what they're guessing. Steve is saying it's double. It's more than that. Big deals. We're we got big deals going on here. Justin Cringe, guys, don't forget to subscribe to his channel. This is a beautiful channel. He's always making these really cool videos. But the problem is I don't want to... I mean, I'm afraid to play some of these because they're good, but I'm afraid to get flagged, right? And uh, I got to be really careful which ones I play. I love this one. I play it all the time. Reviewed your channel, Just Cringe Diversity Channel. 
Unfortunately, we found that your application does not meet our YouTube partner program policies. So we cannot approve your channel for monetization at this time. We have policies in place that we believe support a healthy environment for advertisers, creators, and users, which means sometimes making difficult decisions like this one. Please go to your monetization page to read more about specific policy that our specialists flagged for your channel. <laughs> If you adjust the content on your channel and make more videos like, let's say, uh, Will Smith. Or yeah. yeah, so Justin Cringe channel, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to him. It's a really good channel. Just Cringe Diversity channel. And um, he pinned my comment to the top here. My guy back. Okay. So I was just I was just promoting Just Cringe Diversity Channel, uh, the channel that talks about Justin Trudeau twenty four seven, in 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 a hilarious hilarious way. So he doesn't get flagged. Well, no, I just played the video where they're not going to give him monetization and his channel is not going to be promoted through YouTube streams. Oh, I see. Yeah. Walking Journey, guys, you just uh, 5,000 subs. He's got 5,384. And he's got some good ones here. Hold on, Steve. I'm getting a lot of feedback from you, bud. Are you? I'm hearing myself talk back to myself. Hang on. How's that? Better. Okay. Unemployment with five children to feed. Truck driver shortage. There is no truck driving shortage. What happened to telling you the truth? Yeah, Walking Journey's got some good stuff here, man. I regret leaving my job. Marriage is not easy. Yeah, there's Walking Journey. And who else do I want to plug? Uneducated Economist. We'll see if we can get him back on Mike in the Night if he's available. He's at 26, 2649. Just got a subscriber right now live with us. Don't forget to check out Uneducated Economist. And yeah, Steve, what do you want to wrap up? What do you want to say, buddy? You know what, Mike? We can just leave it there, to be honest with you. Um, there's so many things going on right now. Um, I don't want to get into any more than we already have talked about. The writing's on the wall. We're seeing everything unfold right before our eyes. Um, 2019 is not going to be a good year. I'm, I don't want to be negative, but I'm forced to be negative uh, on the basis of the comments from the Bank of Canada today. Um, and, you know, our economy and our output is all, you know, it's all receding, it's all retracting. So when you go ahead and you factor all those things, watch out for the Canadian dollar. Uh, it's going to start to slide. You're going to continue to see house prices come down. Um, and, you know, watch out for the, those 09 levels. Uh, I know there are certain areas in York Region 905 um, that are pretty much at 2011 pricing right now, 2012 pricing right now, um, and it's uh, it's not very good. Yeah. Okay, Steve. Well, let, let me know if you could be on Mike in the Night. I know it's really late there, but if you can, give us an update on what's going on with the foreclosures in your area. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I'll keep you posted, Mike. So good to be with you. Um, I'd love to add some more to the show, but uh, it's a little premature um, simply due to the fact that uh, before I say something, I want to make sure that it's going to come to fruition or is uh, is already you know happening, so to speak. OK. But then again, I know nothing. Uh, you know, we're, we're just a bunch of guys that come on and we talk and, you know, um, half the time it's uh, it's just events about uh everything that's gone on right now and uh it's uh regrettably um it, it's now now coming to fruition and well, that's the scary part let me ask you one last question how many foreclosures on average are you doing a week on average a week uh we're about seven now wow yeah so as it sits right now there's 20, 23 as of today 
uh, total for the month of January. 23? 23. But keep in mind, keep in mind, you know, there was a portion of uh, the tail end of December Mm -hmm. and uh, basically the first week of January um, that any decent bank doesn't throw people out on the street. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, keep us up to date. I appreciate it. And uh, and uh, we'll see you hopefully for Mike in the Night if you're not tired because it's pretty late then. Absolutely, Mike. So good to be with you. Take care. And uh, you, have, uh, you have a good rest of the week. You too, brother. Goodbye. Cheers. So that was Stevie who is dealing with a lot of foreclosures going around right now. And it's getting pretty, pretty bad, guys. I don't know what to tell or how to tell this to you guys, but I've been talking about this forever. And, oh, it's going to keep going up. It's just going to keep going up. And, yeah, and nothing keeps going up. It's like the Titanic. But, anyways, half of Vancouver property owners have filed empty home tax declaration. Good. I don't know what to say, man. We sold out. And this poor guy. Property taxes, floor, Burnaby, tile maker after soaring assessment. So he went from 11,830 last year to 41,620. Holy smokes. So this housing crisis is dealing with manufacturing, it's dealing with production. It's screwing up people's livelihood, lives. Now there's 100 plus people are going to get laid off because of this stupid thing. 4 million plus home sales down in Vancouver plummeted by half. No one's got the money for that kind of stuff. And Metro Vancouver new home sales are down 19% in 2018. And that's that, people. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Wow, I got 40 people watching me on my backup channel. Wow, you guys must really like me. Guys, please don't forget to hit up the tip jar, please. Please hit up the tip jar. Uh, your donation of $1 a year will help me keep the uh, <laughs> keep this thing going. Uh, YouTube is blacklisting my channel. So, guys, I'm going to ask you guys to go back to my channel and... Um, Go to my channel, and I want someone to go and share one of my favorite videos that you guys have. Here it is here, guys. Go back to my channel, guys. Find a video on my channel, whether it's Trends in the Housing Market, Mike in the Night, Housing Crisis, New List. Uh, I got some new videos I put up. Laneway Homes, Housing Myths, Toronto and Vancouver Real Estate See a Huge Drop, Australia's Housing Talk, Rate Cuts, Holiday Debt, Opal Tower Update, Northern Ireland Housing is Hot. Australia, UK, interest only, mortgages ready to go. Condo crash in Vancouver. Property tax hike, there it is, and I'm talking about it, and now it's affecting everybody. Uh, rants and lifestyle, when YouTube doesn't like you. Uh, another attack on free speech, me and my wife. So if you guys haven't seen my wife, check out this video under my rants and lifestyle. One Walmart closure, is it circumstances or are they downsizing? This is my game store business from scratch, guys. Watch this video series of the store I'm in, how I converted this dilapidated, falling apart building and converted it into a nice rental where I'm operating from every day. Starting a home business from scratch and what I'm doing and living the dream series where I leave the big city to move to a small town and buy this house right here where I'm living and enjoying my life. And Mike, house prices will go to the moon, says Jason Azevedo. And Steve the Plumber says, except, ex except it Kevin Thompson. And please do not buy a house anytime soon. You will lose, I promise that. You like AMTV says, to the moon! Yeah, we're gonna do that some Mike in the night, guys. I want to take trends in the housing market serious. You know, this is serious because it's affecting a lot of people. But Mike and the Night, we have a bit more fun. We talk about serious topics. 
we bring up other channels and some of their discussions and talk about it here live on the channel. And uh, to the moon. Woo! Yep, to the moon, baby. Look at that house I bought, guys. I'm not trying to brag here, but you know what? I left the city. I left the city. And there's a balcony, a massive balcony in the back. And this house goes really far back. You keep walking and walking and walking. It's a lot of real estate. And it's a 55 or 60 wide lot. Because my driveway is actually huge. It actually fits another car here. Beside my 300, you could fit another car right here perfectly. Because the, 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 the grass starts all the way over here. So I kind of wanted to throw that out there, guys. Please, guys, go out. Find a, find a video you like. Share it on your social media, on Twitter or something. You know, I am blacklisted right now and all of my, my view counts down. Everything's down right now. So help out a guy. That's all I ask for. And Jason Acevedo saying it looks like a Portuguese house. Yeah, I'm Portuguese, buddy. Obrigado. Obrigado. So people are talking here in Portuguese in the comment section. Yeah, real Kevin Thompson is trying to talk his way out of a paper bag. And guys, Mike and the Night's really good, guys. Mike and the Night's really picking up on Steam, and it's getting popular. Mike and the Night. And the problem with Mike and the Night is that uh, all these shows that I did, you guys could always tune into them. <laughs> A lot of them are not, they, they have no real expiry dates to them. These shows are uh, basically, and Republicans, rep they don't get old, right? Because they're, they're talking about passive things that are happening around the world that could affect us at any time, you know? And this Mike in the Night, I was really impressed. I had Educated Economist as my first guest. Maybe set up a small e And then I had Walking Journey as my second guest in Texas. And then I had Anthony from downtown Detroit. And then I had uh, Peter here uh, from Sydney, Australia. So I had an all-star cast last week on Mike of the Night. So don't forget to watch my last Mike of the Night. Here, I'll give you, I'll leave the link in the comments below if you want to watch uh, last Saturday's show. If you can watch it, let me know. If you can't, well, that's too bad. All right, guys, I'm ready to turn out. I'm gonna hit the. I'm gonna hit the. Uh, I'm gonna hit the, the hay here. I'm gonna crash for a bit, and tomorrow's a new day. I'll put up another video. And let me know what you guys think. Comment below, and remember, hit me up in the tip jar. Help this transmission. Help out the cause. Thanks for watching and have a good night.